of our section um, is Dr. Andreas Reich. He's assistant professor at the University of Strasbourg in the laboratory of biophotonics and pharmacology. And he's talking about fluorescent polymer nanoparticles for long-term RGB color coding or set of cells for in vitro and vivo imaging. Well, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the possibility to talk about some of our work on these uh, cell labeling with fluorescent polymer nanoparticles. So in our group, we are developing fluorescent probes and fluorescent tools um, for bioimaging. And so one of the questions we're concerned about is how can we increase the information content in such images? And well, a quite straightforward way to add information, at least for bioimaging, is to add colors. To do this efficiently, each color should have a specific meaning or significance. And so in this way, if you add more colors, you can get more information into the image and you can visualize more and more complex um, well, relationships between the components of the system. The way this is, can be done, for example, is in multicolor fluorescence imaging. So in this case, each probe, so each color, should be specific to a certain structure or a population. But this is somehow limited with respect to the number of colors you can do, based on the laser lines you have, based on the um, <coughs> emission colors. So how can we go beyond this conventional three to four color imaging? Well, a very nice uh, proposition was made by this co um, <coughs> concept named Rainbow. So they use only three basic colors in the form of three fluorescent proteins. And they use actually different expression patterns in different cells to get an RGB color coding. So for example, if you have a cell expressing here only blue, you would get a blue cell. Cells expressing only red would give you um, red fluorescent proteins would give you a red cell. And if you have different proportions in between, you would get, get different shades of magenta. So this works, uh, this was applied then to um, distinguish individual neurons in mouse brain, also applied to drosophila, to zebrafish. But one of the limitations as well, it requires genetic modification. So we were thinking as how can we do something like a chemical analog of this rainbow? Well, what do we need for this? We need, well, the possibility to create uh, this color codes we should get a relatively homogeneous stain staining. So here we're not uh, interested in differentiating individual cells, but rather um, to differentiate uh, whole populations or types of cells. Well, then we should have long-term cell labeling. So we need bright staining for this um, due to the cell divisions we'll, we'll go through. And we'll need a faithful transmission of the color codes to the other cells. And well, low toxicity, and so we were talking thinking about fluorescent nanoparticles. There you have now a whole number of families. I won't go into this. You've seen some of this or more even at some points uh, during the conference. Um, especially you get a lot of inorganic, now more and more also organic fluorescent nanoparticles. We are working especially on diluted polymer nanoparticles because we are specifically interested in very high brightness. In order to get a high brightness in fluorescence, you should have high absorbance to um, get a high um, well, absorbance of photons and an efficient uh, fluorescence, so a high quantum yield. And the idea behind these uh, fluorescent particles here is to put, take simply a large number of dyes, so hundreds of fluorophores, to put them into a polymer matrix. And um, while well, the advantages of this is that we can get very, very bright nanoparticles, um, if you use a biodegradable polymer as the matrix, you get, can get biodegradable materials. The color basically only depends on the dye, which is quite nice for us, so we can get very easily normally different uh, colors. It remains challenging to get um, high quality particles below 50 nanometers, and one of the major challenges is um, to avoid the self-quenching of the dyes at these very high concentrations you obtain inside a particle because this would otherwise um, reduce the quantum yield and thus, again, reduce the brightness. The approach we take is um, we combine typically cationic fluorophores with bulky hydrophobic counterions that act as a sort of spacer. 
and um, basically avoid aggregation and thus self-quenching of these nanoparticles. And we then simply combine this with a polymer in an organic solution, an organic solvent, and then form nanoparticles through nanoprecipitation by adding this to an aqueous phase. Um, doing this, we now get relatively nice nanoparticles in a size range between 15 and 15 nanometers. And um, these uh, bulky hydrophobic counterions actually really um, avoid self-quenching very largely, giving us nanoparticles that are now between 5 and 50 times brighter than quantum dots. These also um, internalize very nicely into cells and end up in lysosomes, show very low cytotoxicity. Um, we don't see, typically on these, any sign of dye leaching. So we thought, well, that's quite promising, maybe even for long-term cell labeling. So now what do we need for color coding? Well, for color coding, we need at least three different colors. And the idea behind this we had is to make um, nanoparticles that have different colors but basically are indistinguishable for cells. So this means they should have very similar size and very similar surface properties, but the nanoparticles themselves being rather a sort of neutral container. So we achieved this using three different um, cyanine-based dyes that were encapsulated in PLGA. We optimized this still quite a lot and um, are now using still bulkier um, counterinds, but this gives us nanoparticles that have basically same size, very similar surface properties, but very distinct colors, emission colors, and uh, with colors that absorbances that um, fit very well the major laser lines you have in confocal microscopy. So that's our basic setup. So now, how do we do, cell how do, we do the cell labeling? Well, that's quite straightforward. We simply add a solution of the nanoparticles to cell media, incubate the cells for a couple of hours, rinse, and then we can work with the cells as before, but we now have the labeled cells. So this works very nicely for all three colors, and we get a quite homogeneous labeling. We get a practically identical in entry into the cells for the three colors with around 10,000 nanoparticles. So basically each spot here you see, this is uh, one cell, so this corresponds to about 10,000 nanoparticles. Um, the way we analyze this is using confocal microscopy, um, using them three channels. And what we see is, um, is quite important for the rest, is that if we label cells with, for example, only the blue nanoparticles, we get a nice signal in the blue channel, but none in the green and the red. And basically the same things are true other way around for the other particles. But this allows us now to go to the um, color coding. So there we simply, again, incubate these now with mixtures of solutions of these nanoparticles. And for example, if we take no blue, 25% green, 75% red particles, we incubate this. What we get are cells that give us no signal in blue, a relatively homogeneous signal in the green, and about three times higher signal in the red channel. And now we simply combine these images, and what you get is relatively uniformly, um, homogeneously orange labeled cells. This we can do with different proportions of nanoparticles, corresponding basically to different positions here um, within this RGB uh, color triangle. And so here we got to um, certain colors representing what we call our cell bow with relatively nicely distinguishable colors. And um, what's nice, we can actually quite easily analyze these images automatically, which gives us then basically for each cell again the color code. And if we plot this again in a triangular fashion, we see that we really get um, cell population that have individual and quite well distinguishable color codes. So that's our basic setup. We can then also mix cells of different colors without any problem. And what is still more important for the rest, these color codes are actually quite nicely transmitted to daughter cells. So here you see a cyan labeled cells in, in mitosis, and you see that basically these nanoparticles uh, separated uh, equally between the two daughter cells, but the color code itself is maintained. And, well, what can we do with this now? Well, the idea is what, um, that this allows us to basically distinguish different cell populations when we um, bring them together and to track their behavior in relatively complex um, experiments. And so the first thing we did was um, we simply then took different cell lines, we labeled them separately with uh, different color combinations, and, um, well, mix them again, brought them together, and you can see that basically, based on these colors, you can very easily distinguish the different cell types, um, which gives you the possibility to then go to 
relatively complex uh, experiments where you can uh, have a look, a look on the interactions of different cell types, but you can also say um, uh, go to some sort of multiplexing all in one pot where you directly um, have different cell lines that you submit to um, well, basically the identical conditions of a drug or um, whatever else you want. <laughs> We can then also, um, we did also apply this to 3D cell culture, a spheroid model of a tumor here. It's made up of two types of astrocyte. It was labeled in two colors, and if you put them on the surface, we see the cells coming out, and we can actually very easily distinguish which cell type of cells comes out at which moment and in which proportions. Um, we then went further and got, uh, tried if this works also in vivo, and so um, in this case, we simply um, again, labeled different cell populations with different colors. We mixed them and we brought up, oh, sorry, and we injected them into um, live zebra fish, and this allowed us to distinguish these different um, cell populations also in the living zebra fish. And <clears throat> well, finally, we also looked at um, what we could do for um, case of developmental biology, and so we um, made the mixture of the nanoparticles in this case. Micro injected them at the eight cell stage, in this case, six different cells at this level. And what you can see is that we can actually very easily then, so these are transmitted to the daughter cells, and we can very easily track basically from where these um, cells originated in the beginning. So, with this, I hope I could uh, convince you that we have developed a quite robust and simple method for creating such numerous well defined color codes in cells. Um, this is actually quite well retained, and we can um, uh, culture these cells and for some examples over weeks. Uh, we can make uh, this work in a very nice fashion in vivo. And um, for us, this still goes a little bit further because it's, a, it's another way for us also to think about how to integrate multifunctionality in nanosystems. So um, instead of making ever more um, multifunctional complex nanoparticles, the idea here is basically to make always the same container, but with each type of nanoparticle just another um, well, functionality inside, but they are indistinguishable for whatever biological system you have. And so you simply let biology take care of bringing them together in the location, just uh, through stochastic, basically, and um, in this case, get them multifunctional at the point where you want to get them. With this, I would like to thank a couple of people that helped us in this work and our funding agencies and you for staying inside your break. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for this interesting talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, yes please. Thank you for the very interesting presentation. Uh, actually, I have many questions, but I, I will uh, make only one. Uh, for how many generations do the cells retain the stain? Well, that's um, simple um, mathematics. So in this case, I said we're at about um, 10,000 cells. So uh, basically, from what we've seen is um, really the, the nanoparticles, at least over um, a week at least, are lost only through the loss, are only um, limited by the divisions, which means that um, for this now we go to something higher, so like 50,000, and so, well, we still should have, let's say, around 100, 100 nanoparticles inside the cell to really distinguish a color code. So the nanoparticles, they're not being uh, degraded, they're not being ex 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 excreted from the cells, they're just being diluted. Not that, uh, so not of the, over the time scales we're looking here. So these PLGAs, um, while well, they have degradation time frames that are rather in the time scale of really tens of weeks, months, something like this. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one thing. And um, it seems that they don't, uh, ex they're not very much excreted, at least in the cell lines, uh, in these cell lines here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there, are there other questions? Yep, please. Thanks, very interesting. Um, I'm sorry if I missed it, but what is the mechanism of entry into the cell? What, what, is it just passive? Uh, passive endocytosis, yes. In this case, we, well, that's what we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah And we, we do the labeling um, 
outside of the organism. So, so that's you just incubate the for some time, then wash away. Three hours. And Two hours is sufficient. How, how many different salons have you tried using that? Um, so, well, well, let's go back. We, well, I showed <coughs> you the, um, well, there are two here. Um, these are the six we uh, cancer cell lines. So we tried, um, uh, sorry, these ones are still in the other ones. And we tried now on stem cells. Um, and uh, T cells, so some sort of immune cell? For the moment not, but it depends a little bit on the um, biological yeah. uh, collaborators we have. Thanks. Yeah. OK, so if there are no other questions, I would like to thank all the speakers today for their really exciting talk. Thank you very much again. And I hope that next time or next uh, Cleanup Congress, we will have some new 